Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program. In this case we're in 1.3.1 because we are going to be combining the Shinkansen space plane, a space plane of my own design, with the shuttle stack, which I normally use in 1.3.1 for various reasons, including the use of the real KSC and the shuttle launch pad, which you will see later on. But uh, first, uh, for those who may not have seen videos about the Shinkansen space plane before, this is a space plane system that I designed whereby it is launched like this, uh, a pair of planes. And the one on the left is filled with fuel. It has no people inside, even though it has mock cockpit windows. The one on the right is the actual space plane with an actual cockpit. Uh, really, it can't carry much cargo, but it technically has a cargo bay. And uh, it has a great deal of methane oxygen fuel in the back. Uh, incidentally, that... Uh, proves to complicate the whole abort situation because it really does have to drain all that fuel before coming down. Otherwise it's imbalanced, otherwise it's way tail heavy. But uh, anyway, that's not a discussion for right now. But I also created the engines, which are methane oxygen engines. Uh, they're not quite as good as Raptor engines, at least in theory. Uh, so yeah, and we have methane oxygen uh, OMS engines right there. Now, the benefits of this system are that it, if you recall in previous videos, we tried to bring the shuttle back from the moon, well, one previous video, and that took a lot of passes, way too many, and the crew would get very irradiated. Well, the Shinkansen, if fully fueled in orbit, uh, can go to the moon and then come back, and it would only take three passes in order to uh, return to low Earth orbit. And the reason for that is because it's got basically a similar surface area to the shuttle, maybe a little bit less, but it doesn't have the shuttle's heft. Uh, you see, it doesn't have the bulk of the shuttle and a lot of the mass of the shuttle. If we can bring out the shuttle here, I mean, we can just take a look at the shuttle cockpit. Oh. Um, for comparison, <laughs> uh, cheek to cheek, um, you can see the shuttle is very much more bulky. Uh, the crew space in the shuttle is like this, whereas the crew space in the Shinkansen, uh, Shinkansen space plane is long. It's actually uh, all of this portion here. So yeah, it's more uh, arrayed in a long fashion than a tall fashion, uh, where the sh shuttle has two floors basically. And then you can uh, tell, uh, I think this is in line, right? Yeah. So the size of the shuttle is way bigger in this direction than for the Shinkansen space plane. And that leads the Shinkansen space plane to be much lighter. It just curves around. Really, this space plane is built around these tanks. These propellant tanks are actually, they're actually uh, the Shijita upper stage tanks from my Shijita rocket. And there's two of them. There's basically two upper stages with the upper stage engines, two of those. And the airframe is built around that. It can be any uh, narrower because it wouldn't fit the fuel tanks. So, and obviously it can't be any shorter, otherwise the carrier plane wouldn't be able to fit the additional fuel tank for it to get to orbit, and barely gets to orbit, really. Anyway, but we're not going to be concerned about that. The thing I want to do today is answer the question, what if we launched it on the shuttle stack? Because maybe then we wouldn't have to refuel it in orbit. Now, in the previous videos, we had to slap a whole lot of boosters onto the shuttle in order to have it get a flyby of the moon, right? It was quite an ordeal, 35 Merlin 1Ds. But this is lighter, and it also has its own internal fuel and efficient engines. And so, well, let me put it on the shuttle stack and find out whether the shuttle stack can launch it to the moon if it then uses its own uh, engines and fuel to complete the trip. So this is what that looks like. We have the Shinkansen up here. It's mounted this high because we've also got the shuttle mouse, uh, the shuttle engine returner, which has the three SSMEs to use the external fuel tank. So we are going with that arrangement and the same, you know, the regular SRBs and everything. So you've seen this arrangement before, hopefully, if you've watched previous videos. But um, yeah, then we have this heavy Shinkansen space plane on top. We have to put it here, otherwise it would be imbalanced. Um, I mean, I guess we could put it on this side here, 
uh, as long as it's higher up, maybe uh, then these engines can thrust through it. It's possible that this is still a bad arrangement and they'll be too high up here, close to the end when that fuel tank runs out. Uh, we might have to tilt these engines. I think maybe in the end we're going to have the Shinkansen space plane high on this side. Um, which is sad because we'll still have this strut sticking out, but yeah. If we can take a look, the Shinkansen space plane fully fueled is about 152 tons. Um, the rest of this mass is the empty uh, external tank, I think. I think the shuttle mouse is maybe part of that 152 tons. So you can see the delta Vs here. And that's promising, 13,817 meters per second. Sounds good. Where things sort of go wrong is here. Uh, when we release the boosters, our thrust weight ratio in vacuum is very low. So we are going to see about that. Yeah. That is going to be interesting. We'll try and launch with the shuttle launch script first. But I think we're going to have to modify it a bit. So... Obviously, aerodynamically, this is problematic. Uh, on the bright side, there's no risk of the external tank's foam hitting the leading edge tiles of the Shinkansen space plane because they're so high up. The, the foam could hit the leading edge tiles of the shuttle engine returner, but not the Shinkansen space plane. So it, uh, the foam could hit these bottom tiles, but those proved uh, much more resilient to that sort of thing. So anyway, we, uh, well, let's proceed and see what happens. Okay, so here we are. And uh, I actually had the music credit up even though no music was playing. Sorry if that confused anybody. Uh, but I guess we'll assume that we can make it and target the moon. moon. Maybe, we'll see. I think this... The Shinkansen will need to be on the opposite side, but for everybody's amusement, we'll do it like this first. It may fail before we even get to that part because of the low thrust to weight ratio. Okay, we'll, I'm just gonna run the shell script as is and we'll see what happens. Obviously, the Shinkansen can't light its engines at this point. So I actually found out that they did think of this shuttle mouse idea. I, I thought it was my original idea, but uh, looking through all sorts of proposals for, for the shuttle program, they did think of uh, returning the engines with this smaller shuttle mouse and then having an uh, adapter on top and having the payload on top. Uh, but, but because it's not attaching to the forward strut here, the way they resolved the load issue was to have two shuttle mouses, one on either side. So a total of six SSMEs. I don't know what they called them, but uh, I just saw a diagram with it. I don't know how serious an idea it was, but... Sure enough, uh, in the shuttle program they thought of everything. They really did. Even this. So... The shuttle mouse is sort of built around the back end of the shuttle. This is the engine mount of the shuttle back here, basically. And what I might do is break away from that. If we have two shuttle mice, maybe we should have two engines on each one. And then that would make for a nicer sort of mini space plane thing. It'll look a lot more like a lifting body kind of deal. And I think that could uh, help because we've brought the shuttle engine return back down, but it sort of spins a whole lot. It doesn't... It's really not meant to be a space plane so much as it's a pod. It's actually just supposed to go flat against the airstream. But that's difficult. It's a lot more difficult to do that with this shape. The, the, the pod shape with a perfect circle at the bottom is easier. This shape, doing that, it's possible to turn it into a pod instead of a space plane re-entry, but it's not the easiest to get the center of mass and center of the fright, especially because the engines are so heavy. 
So that pulls the center of mass back a lot. So I'm looking into a modified version of this and then having one on either side. Okay, and booster set. All right, they're off. And well, kind of lapse this is going down. We'll see if it goes down too much. So I did try this arrangement on a live stream once, but that time I put the Shinkansen directly opposite the shuttle engine returner and that did not work very well in terms of balance. I think once again uh, that the thrust weight ratio might be a little bit too low here. Really feeling heavy right now. I don't think it's gonna make it. Yeah, no, I don't think it will. And I think that happened during the live stream as well, if I recall. Everything goes pear-shaped. And of course, um, since the Shinkansen hasn't burned its fuel yet, it's going to be aerodynamically imbalanced. Well, we're going up now. But it's too late, and we've lost balance. Yeah, we're maxed out on pitch and it can't hold it. Okay. It's it's enough. Whoa. All right. So let's try this in a different way. Okay, so we've switched which side the Shinkansen itself is on, and it's a little bit hard to determine exactly how to approach editing the shuttle launch script for this. That's yeah, well, I tried something, and we'll see. That something will make it steeper, but I don't know if it's going to be steep enough or whether it'll throw something else off. There's probably other changes I need to make, like telling it to switch the engine mode on the Shinkansen space plane when it decides to use those engines. But anyway. Oh, uh, oh, because it's on the opposite side, the roll has to be opposite. Uh, well, no, it doesn't, because it really depends on where the engine mouse is. Well, it depends on the g-forces that you want on the crew. Oh, it's all complicated. Well, they're going this way around this time. Well, uh, the roll is the least of our problems right now. <laughs> that... This arrangement does cause problems for the shuttle engine returner in that it can't really come back to Cape Canaveral. It's going to be suborbital when it decouples. Uh, you know, it's not getting all the way to orbit on its own. The Shinkansen has to complete orbit. So, yeah, I'm not. It wasn't good at doing re entry in the first place. I don't know how good it would be from a suborbital trajectory and where the heck it would splash down. Probably splash down. Maybe land. Probably somewhere in the Indian Ocean. No, no, I actually probably won't get that far. Probably in the Atlantic somewhere. Okay, booster set. Oh, they're going forward a bit. Well, I guess they usually do. That's fine. Well, we're still losing ground here. I think the problem is because it's controlling from this opposite side. It needs to be even more extreme. I, I, I don't think that should be the case though, but it certainly ends up looking shallower than it did last time. This is definitely not working out right. Okay, filling around with KOS is probably a different struggle than I, I want to tangle with right now. I want to see whether this works, so I'm going to go ahead and use Smart ASS and launch it like that. So, ignition. And launch. Oh, okay, probably should not have it do that quite like that. Uh, 
Okay, well, good enough. Makes for a very nice view, interesting sort of situation overall. I didn't throw down, but yeah, we'll just proceed. Okay, and booster set. And we're gonna maintain this pitch. Hopefully it'll be enough. Obviously it looks high, but then the engines are relatively speaking tilted down by 10 degrees. Oh, I hope that's 10 degrees. Maybe it's more than that on this shuttle mouse, I can't really tell. But anyway, it ought to be 10 degrees. Looking a bit rough. Well, I'll pitch up even more. Well, you can sort of see why this needed to be tested and we couldn't just, like, look at the Delta V and the VAB and decide, yes, it was going to work. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Well, we might catch ourselves in time, but it's gonna be rough. And certainly this is not optimal. We've got heating. And the pitch is maxed out. Because of the dynamic pressure now. Oh, and... Yeah, it's lost balance here. I can't tell whether that's because of aerodynamics or whether it's because of the center of mass versus center of thrust. Either way, this isn't very good. All right, all right, enough, enough, enough. Okay, must go steeper this time. SAS on, throttle up, ignition. launch I wish this could acquire our current role into this field and then adjust based on that uh, so that we could adjust based on that uh, it says 180 we're close to 180 so let's see it doesn't seem that way <laughs> uh, this this role and that role are not the same roll angle so they're 90 degrees off or not. No, that roll angle does not make any sense whatsoever. Okay, fine. Yeah, that's just all, all random. Yeah, I have been completely fooled about how steep this needs to go. Well, we ended up at 55 degree pitch last time, so I guess we'll hold it there. And separation. I mean, even at this pitch, our acceleration is horrid, and our time to abwaps this is going down. Is this too much for the shell stack to carry? It's possible we should just underfuel the Shinkansen and have it at half fuel. After all, it's not as efficient as the SSMEs, so that's a valid point. I think if this doesn't work, that's the next thing I'm gonna do, and we'll just get it up here, like that. Time to Apwaps is still going down, but we're getting to space here. Okay, now it's going up. <laughs> now we gotta watch out for the pitch. Oh. Let me ready these engines. Deploy switch engine mode. It's wiggling around a whole lot. Uh, let me just... Oh, 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 SAS is not better. Uh, oh no, oh no. Here, can you try again? Try again, please. Oh, God.
I shouldn't have let it go out of whack. Um, let me try and activate these. Okay, yeah, the, the angle on the Shinkansen's engines isn't helping much because it doesn't point through the center of mass of the stack, points through the center mass of the Shinkansen itself. Okay. Um, uh, it's spinning all over the place. Get off of me. Uh, oh. Uh, I don't know if it took anything important. Okay. Uh, prograde. We're going down pretty fast, though. Did we activate our RCS? It seems that way. Oh, we're going back down again. Come on, turn pro grade. Okay, well, this obviously has not worked out at all. We're ba going back down again. Sure as anything. Um, so, next try, we're just gonna underfuel this. I think maybe that's the solution to all our problems. Wow, this is actually imbalanced on its own. Okay, I think the spinning around at the end of the last flight was because of bad aerodynamics, not because of bad engine arrangements, but we'll see. So I've reduced the amount of fuel in here, and uh, hopefully that'll be good enough, we'll see. But uh, I'll fly it manually to be, sh well, to try my best. So here we go again. Ignition. And launch. With this amount of fuel, I don't think we could very easily get into a tight orbit around the moon or anything. We could probably get into a loose orbit around the moon and then break orbit and come back though. I mean, even after lightening the load, it says 0.81 for the thrust weight ratio there. That doesn't seem any better than it was before, but I don't know. Okay, booster set. Okay, we are once again in space, and our time to apoapsis should be going up again soon. Okay, well, pitch is starting to get a little bit maxed out. I'm gonna throttle them down a bit. Oh, it's wiggling now. Oh, 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 oh. I wonder, uh, let's enable that RCS. And possibly this RCS. I don't know if that'll help. Oh, shut down. Okay. Okay, separation. Oh. Oh, they blow the wrong way, don't they? <laughs> they blow away from the engine returner, but that's not the way we need them to blow, huh? Okay. Let's make sure they're both in the right mode. They are. Yeah, a little bit off on the orbit, but... We have technically made orbit at 376 by 157, but boy was it a lot more trouble than I thought it was going to be. And we can transfer to the moon, we have enough, but we, we would have to do a flyby. We couldn't do a... Uh, we can make orbit around it, it'll just have to be a flyby. I'm not going to bring it all the way back down again. And do all the passes right now. But we'll just verify that it can handle this burn. We would need a mid-course adjustments to get the free return, I think. The timing and the inclination is a bit off. Okay, but let's just try this. I want to make sure that the engines aren't imbalanced. And we need to do this right now. So, selling the fuel down. And ignition.
Okay, we'll do the remainder with the OMS engines. Well, if we want the free return, it's going to have to be higher up because we didn't do it as precisely as we needed to for that. Out of that, or we do a burn uh, uh, close to the moon. We'll do a flyby of the moon, but these these Kerbals are not getting back. Don't tell them. <laughs> um, they're, they're headed out in interplanetary space. But just for show, we'll uh, do this much. But clearly this whole situation needs refinement. It seems a little bit tight. And maybe... Maybe it can't actually do this after all. The shuttle stack... Uh, well, if we had four engines at the bottom instead of three, and we had two engine mice, each with two engines, maybe that arrangement would have enough thrust-to-weight ratio to do this properly. So, there is that. Yes, we, at the moment, use solar panels, not fuel cells, on this. This is very um, X-37-ish. Mainly because it's meant to stay in space for a very long period of time, and fuel cells generally aren't meant for long-duration missions. Okay, well, the moon's around here somewhere, as usual. The sunlight is making it very mysterious, I imagine. Uh, well, it, it's it's just blocked the sun, <laughs> but it's completely dark, so we can't see it. Well, oh, I still can't see it very well. Um, oh, there it is. We can see the arc of it. Jeez. All right, well, there's the moon. So, mixed results on this experiment. Yep. This is one of those cases where, in theory, if you look at the delta V in the VAB, it looks all right, you know, liftoff thrust is all right, but there are complications. So, anyway, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.